Here we're going to look at one of my favorite induction problems to give to students just after they've learned the principle of mathematical induction. And what I like about this problem, other than the fact that it's a great exercise for learning induction, is that it ties back into calculus. And generally when you're learning about induction, you've just taken some calculus classes. And so this has to do with something that I'll just call a bigger product rule. So let's recall the standard product rule, and that is the derivative of f of x times g of x. So I'll denote that by f of x g of x prime. So that equals f prime g plus f g prime. So in other words, we sum the product of f and g, taking the derivative of one at a time. You might say, well, is there a product rule for a second derivative? And yes, there is. And you can, in fact, calculate it pretty easily just by taking the derivative of both sides of this first line. I'll let you guys do all the details if you need to, but what you end up with is f of x times g of x double prime is equal to f double prime g plus 2 f prime g prime plus g double prime. So this looks mysteriously familiar. Let's compare that to maybe a well-known formula that you learn like maybe before calculus even, and that is a plus b quantity squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So what it looks like is happening here is that this expansion of the second derivative in terms of derivatives of the component functions is occurring just like squaring out a binomial. And in fact, that's what happens in general. And that's sometimes called the Leibniz rule. And so how it goes is this. If we take the nth derivative of the product f times g, obviously the, these need to be differentiable or something. What we get is the sum as k goes from zero to n of n choose k, the kth derivative of f times the n minus kth derivative of g. So that looks exactly like binomial expansion if we were to write out a plus b to the nth power. It's just our exponents are being replaced by derivatives. Okay, so let's prove this. And like I alluded to earlier, this is a good exercise to prove with induction. Although I bet there's some trick to prove this without induction. If you maybe know a trick to use to prove this without induction, maybe post it in the comments. So that means we need to start with a base case. Now the base case should probably be n equals one because that's the most illustrative. I think you can probably use n equals zero at the base case, but that doesn't really give you much motivation for what's going on. But we don't even need to do that. n equals one clearly is just the normal product rule, which we are assuming to be true already. Okay, so now let's make an induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some m bigger than or equal to one, we have this statement is true for the nth derivative. We'll just write that down just so that we have it. So we have f of x times g of x, the nth derivative, which I'll write like that, is equal to the sum as k goes from zero up to m of m choose k, the kth derivative of x, and then the m minus kth derivative of g. Okay, so we're supposing that that is true. And then we wanna consider the m plus first derivative. So let's write that down. So consider, like I said, the m plus first derivative. So I'll write that as f of x times g of x to the m plus one in parentheses, meaning that we're taking the m plus first derivative. But notice the m plus first derivative is just the derivative of the nth derivative. So I can write that as the derivative of the nth derivative like I just said. But now we can apply our induction hypothesis to this thing which maybe I will square in red. We can replace that with this thing here which I've also squared in red. So let's see. That's gonna give us the derivative with respect to x 
of this sum as k goes from zero up to m of m choose k. And then we've got the kth derivative of x and then the m minus kth derivative of g. Okay, then for our next step, we'll use the fact that the derivative is a linear transformation on the space of differentiable functions. So that means we can bring this derivative inside of the sum. And in fact, we can also bring it inside of this multiplication by the binomial coefficient. But then we can apply this derivative to our product of the kth derivative of f and the m minus kth derivative of g. And in fact, that's really just doing the base case on that product. Instead of having f times g, we've got this kth derivative of f and the m minus kth derivative of g. So let's just like point out that we're doing that because it's a linear transformation, bringing it inside the sum, and then bringing it and applying it to those things, we will use the base case. So let's see, that's going to give us this sum as k goes from zero up to m of m choose k, and now maybe in blue parentheses, I'll write what happens to this guy right here when we take the derivative. So we'll have the k plus first derivative of x, and then the m minus kth derivative of g plus the kth derivative of f, and then the m plus first minus kth derivative of g. So that's just the standard product rule. We take the derivative of that, which brings this k to k plus one, and then we take the derivative of that, which brings that m minus k to m minus k plus one, which I've just written in this other way. Okay, so let's maybe bring a summary of this situation to the top, and then we can finish off this inductive proof, and then look at a little bit of a cheeky application. Okay, on the last board, we got to this point where we had the m plus first derivative of our product f times g as a sum, of two terms, but we can take that sum of two terms and break it into two sums. And I've done that off the board. That's really obviously true because we've got a finite sum here, so we don't have to worry about convergence or anything like that. Okay, so now keeping in mind where we're trying to go, that should motivate how we should re-index this. So notice this starts at the first derivative of f, and it ends at the zeroth derivative of g. So it's missing the zeroth derivative of f, and then likewise, it'll be missing the m plus first derivative of g, just keeping in mind the formula that we're going for. And then likewise, this one right here is missing the m plus first derivative of f. So let's see how that can motivate a change of index for each of these. So for this term, what I wanna do is maybe take out the mth term. So taking out the mth term, we'll have the m plus first derivative of f, and then the zeroth derivative of g, which is just g of x. So just let's notate that by taking out the mth term to go right here. And then over on this branch, we'll make a change of index. So let's maybe change our index where we replace k with k minus one. So that's gonna change our starting point and our ending point. So it'll change our starting point so that we start at k equals one, and it'll change our ending point so that we end at m plus one. But we won't worry about that because we've already taken that top point out. So here that means we're going to stop at m, keeping in mind that the m plus first term is over here now. And now we're going to have m choose k minus 1, and then the kth derivative of f, and then the m plus first minus kth derivative of g. Keeping in mind that we really have the m minus 
the quantity k minus one, but that minus turns that into a plus. So we've got exactly that right there. Okay, and now let's play the same game here, but instead we'll bring out the zeroth term. So let's bring out the k equals zero term. And then for the rest of the terms here, we do not need to re-index. So let's notice that bringing out the zeroth term will leave us with m choose zero. So that's just one. I should have pointed out that this term gives us m choose m, which is one. And then we'll have just f of x with a zeroth derivative. So that's just f of x. And then we'll have the m plus first derivative of g like that. Okay, and then let's see what we get for the rest of these terms. Nothing really changes except the starting point of our sum. So, so this is going to go from k equals 1 up to m of m choose k, the k derivative of f, and then the m plus first minus k derivative of g. Okay, nice. But now let's look at what, we've ha what we have. We have these two terms, which I've squared in purple, that are outside of the sums. And then these, which I'll square in green, that are inside of the sum. And they're inside of the sum with the same indexing and the derivative terms are the same. So that means we can start putting this together. So let's start with this guy right here. So we've got the m plus first derivative of g of f and the zeroth derivative of g. And then we'll have plus the sum as k goes from 1 up to m of m choose k minus 1 plus m choose k, the k derivative of f and then the m plus first minus k derivative of g. So again, the indices on these sums are the same, and then these derivatives of f and g match up. So that's how we can combine all of those terms. Okay, so now we'll be left with this last term, f of x and then the m plus first derivative of g. Okay, so now let's bring that up here and then we can finish this proof off. So, so far we have the following equality and now we just wanna put this into the correct form. So I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that there exists some nice binomial coefficient identities, but I won't prove them. I'll let you guys look those up if you need to see proofs um, or perhaps I'll make a video later where we prove these kind of things. Although I think I have some on the channel already. So first of all, there's a nice binomial coefficient identity involving those two. So let's see, that allows us to take this stuff in yellow and replace it with m plus one choose k. Okay, and then we can sneak something in here. We can sneak an m plus one choose zero in here because anything choose zero is one. And then likewise, we can sneak an m plus one, choose m plus one here, because anything choose itself is one. But now that allows us to slam all of these things together into a single sum. This is the zeroth term of the sum. This is the kth term for the sum for k equals one to m, and then that's the m plus first term of the sum. So we're left with this sum as k goes from zero up to m plus one of m plus one choose k, and then the kth derivative of f, and then the m plus first minus kth derivative of g. And if we put this m plus one here in parentheses, we can see that assuming our induction hypothesis, we have proven the other case. In other words, we've proven that this equation holds. Okay, so now to finish this video off, I wanna do like a sneaky little application of this proposition. It's most definitely not the easiest way to prove the identity that we're gonna get at, but I think it's kind of cute. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna finish this off with a neat little application of this. So I'm gonna start with taking the number two to the n, and notice that that is exactly the same thing as two to the n times e to the two x, where we've evaluated that at x equals zero. But then two to the n times e to the two x is exactly the nth derivative of e to the two x. 
And then again, we've evaluated this thing at x equals zero. Okay, but notice that e to the two x is e to the x times e to the x. So we can write this as e to the x times e to the x. The nth derivative of that evaluated at x equals zero. Then where can we go from here? Well, we can apply this Leibniz rule to our setup here where this is the function f and this is the function g. So that's gonna give us this sum as k goes from zero up to n of n choose k. And then we have the kth derivative of e to the x. Well, that's just gonna be e to the x. And then the n minus kth derivative of e to the x, that's just going to be another e to the x. And then finally, we need to evaluate this at x equals 0 because that was part of our setup. But now evaluating that at x equals 0, we'll just get 1. And that leaves us with this sum as k goes from 0 up to n of n choose k. And now looking at the extreme left, and right hand side of this equation, we see this nice binomial coefficient identity, which can most definitely be proven a lot of other ways which are easier. And that's a good place to stop.